What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at a Shopify SQL interview question. This one's marked as medium, but it is pretty hard. Let's get into it. So this one's called most sold in Germany. I'm actually from Germany if you haven't guessed yet, so this one's interesting for me. And our task is to find the product with the most orders from users in Germany. I'll put the market name of the product or products in case of a tie. And we have four tables. <laughs> four. We have Shopify orders, Shopify users, DIM product and map product order. Now Shopify orders seems to contain orders from Shopify users, has a bunch of IDs in there, dates and all that. Shopify users, which has user information, first name, last name, country. I think we're going to have to use country to filter to Germany since it asks for users in Germany, not products in Germany or anything. We have DIM product, which is a dimension table for product, which has a product name, product brand, market name. I think we're supposed to output market name. I'll put the market name of the product or products in case of a tie. Now, in case of a tie, it's also important if there's more than one product which has the top amount of orders from users in Germany, then we should output more than one. And finally, we have map product order, which maps products to orders so there's just order ID and product ID in there so this one's there to make everything more performant and yeah to kind of reduce stuff in being just in one place this one just takes an order ID and tells you which products were in that order instead of having everything in show for orders yep. that's kind of just the, uh, the structure of everything yeah, but four tables, usually we don't have that many. I think for Strata Stretch, often there's only one table in the question, which is not always the case in real interviews. Often there are two tables to kind of test your ability to join them, but four tables is quite a lot. So let's work through that. The question itself is quite simple, but it can be hard to work with so many tables. Now, if you look at the task, I usually want to find out whether I have to use all of them and which of them contain the important information. We do need orders since we want to count orders and then filter to the top amount of orders from users in Germany. Users in Germany can be found in the country field in Shopify users, so we're going to have to use Shopify users too. DIM product has the market name and we should output the market name in the end. And we don't know which order contains which product if we don't use map product order. Yeah, and basically we want to get an output which counts the amount of orders per product from users in Germany, then rank that with the highest amount of orders on top, and then limit that to only the ones that have the highest amount of orders, rank number one. So I'm using limit and rank, and <laughs> these are the two things we could use for this question. If we were to use limit one, just output, uh, just limit the amount of rows we output, then we wouldn't be able to account for ties. We, we would have to do limit one and then we wouldn't allow for tie. If we do limit two and there are three which would be tied, we'd still cut them off. So we're gonna have to rank them, use the rank window function to do that after we combine all these tables and then just filter to rank being one. And that's, that's something we do often, I think, the last few videos I, I had like three or four of out of ten were filter on the rank being one something so that's what we're going to do here again but first let's take care of combining these tables so we're going to select star from Shopify orders join that to Shopify users joining on Hmm. Actually, gonna write it out. Orders dot user ID is Shopify users dot ID. It's just called ID in here, and these seem to be the primary keys linking them. Then we have map product order, and we do have order ID and product ID in here. Order ID is something we've seen before in Shopify orders. So that's what I'm going to use to link them. And then I'm going to link dim product, which contains a product ID, which we haven't had before. 
So we're gonna have to do it in this logical order for it to make sense for me. So let's join map product order. On, this should be on as well. Okay. Shopify orders dot order ID should be my product order dot order ID. And then finally we have called dim product. And we're gonna use the order ID from Shopify orders. No, we have to use the product ID from map product order. That's what I just said. Dim product dot SKU UID. Okay, once again, product ID has a different name in Dim product, so you've got to be careful here. But that's the mapping we have to do. I hope I don't have any typos, so let's just run that and see if it works here. I do have missing front clause. Oh, it's just called map product order. Yep. Okay, but that gives us a huge table because it combines all of these columns, but it does work. So we have all the information in there. We need to use all tables. And now let's get back to our task of finding the product with the most orders from users in Germany. So what I'm gonna do right here, before I forget, is filter the country to Germany. Country is in Shopify users. Maybe to make it clear, I'm gonna state out the table name, even though country is only in this one table. But yeah, this will reduce our orders to users from Germany only. Now we could do account. So let's get product ID, count distinct order ID, get the number of orders. And if we group by product ID, it should give us a count of orders per product ID. Order ID is ambiguous. This one is in multiple order uh, multiple tables. So let's say Shopify orders dot order ID. Product ID should not be ambiguous because the other column is called product ID. It does get messy with these with this many tables, but yeah, I guess that's the main challenge here. So we do have a count. We could order that to have the highest count on top. But I wanted to use a rank window function anyway, so I'm gonna, maybe I'll leave that here. And now create a rank based on that count directly. So I'm gonna spell out rank, over, type out my window function syntax, partition by, order by. And I want to create a rank based on the order of the count, of the, or based on the order count pretty much. So the highest rank should be the highest order count. So I'm gonna order by this, uh, this entire count function I just came up with. And yeah, order that by descending order. So highest count will be on, will be on top, that will be rank number one. And yeah, that's gonna look like this if I run this. Once again, another error. I just have to get rid of that partition by because I'm not using it. That's kind of my template. But we do get our rank one here for the first two product IDs. Then it jumps to rank three because we're using the regular rank window function. If I were to use dense rank, it would jump to two for the next product ID because dense rank is defined as starting with the next rank even if there's a tie. So it's going to go 1, 1, 2 instead of 1, 1, 3. Um, it just depends on what you want to use or the, the problem definition. But in this case, we just need to output the number 1. So 
it doesn't matter which one we're using. I'm just gonna change it to regular rank and call that R. Always call that rank column R. And yeah, so that's gonna take us pretty far. And now we just need to take all of this, put it into a subquery and filter to rank being one. We also want to output the market name of the product instead of the product. So I'm gonna add the market name as another comment here. Add that to the group by. This count wouldn't work without the group by and the count in the window function wouldn't work either. So I'm gonna have to leave it here and add this mark name as well. All right, so we do have that market name in there now. So let's put that into subquery and select our final output from that. So we're gonna select market name from this subquery. Let's call it German orders ranked and filter to the rank being one. To do the trick, we get Samsung Galaxy Tab A and Samsung Galaxy S21. Even though I'm not sure why these are under market name, it sounds like a product name, but that's the accepted solution. That's gonna be it for that question. I think, as I said, main challenge is combining all of these tables. I think it's unrealistic to get four different tables in a tech test, tech screen, because it just takes too much time. Like, I think companies would rather have you spend more time on more questions instead of joining four tables. And this one isn't even a complicated join. It's just about finding out which are the primary keys and what the IDs are named. Yeah. So I think more realistic is to get a two table question, maybe three table question, or just get a one table question and then a two table question instead of this huge four table question, if that makes sense. Now companies often want to test your ability to join tables in general and to do more complex joins, just such as a left join, or right join. But this one yeah, can be good practice, but don't expect such a huge amount of tables in an interview I'd say. That's gonna be it for that question as I said if you want to try this one out I'm gonna have a direct link to this question below in the comments and in the description. I think this one is still typical for Shopify in terms of just finding the top products. Uh, so give this one a try and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.